seated. Members of the Board of Trustees, President Gabriel Esteban, Provost Salma Ghanem, members of the faculty, administration, and staff, and honored guests and graduates, welcome to DePaul University's 123rd commencement. Today we celebrate the graduation of the College of Law's Class of 2022. I am Wendy Netter Epstein, Professor of Law, and I will serve as the University Marshal for today's proceedings. As part of our DePaul tradition, we begin each commencement ceremony with a land acknowledgement, a prayer, and the singing of the national anthem. We ask that you now rise, if you are able, and remain standing throughout these important moments. At DePaul University, we acknowledge that we live and work on traditional native lands that are home to well over 100 different tribal nations. We extend our respect to all of them, including the Potawatomi, Ojibwe, and Odawa nations who signed the Treaty of Chicago in 1821 and 1833. We also recognize the Ho-Chunk, Miamia, Menominee, Illinois Confederacy, and Peoria people who also maintained relationships with this land. We acknowledge that these sacred homelands were ruptured by the European invasion of the Americas. In 1493, Pope Alexander VI promulgated the Doctrine of Discovery, which sees native lands and resources with impunity. This doctrine has been used by countries throughout the Americas, including the US, to legitimize colonial policies of displacement and genocide toward native peoples and to justify colonial legacy, legacies of white superiority and global capitalism. We appreciate that today Chicago is home to the sixth largest urban native population in the United States. We further recognize and support the enduring presence of Native peoples among our faculty, staff, and student body. And in the spirit of St. Vincent de Paul, we reaffirm our commitment, both as an institution and as individuals, to help make our community and our society a more equitable, welcoming, and just place for all. Please remain, stand remain standing and welcome Reverend Memo Campuzano, who will offer an invocation. If you wish, please join me in prayer. We invite you, most holy one, divine spirit of justice and mercy, to be with us as we celebrate hard work, dedication, and learning. Indeed, we celebrate the opportunity to gather, to share this moment of thanksgiving and celebration together with family, friends, and colleagues. We give thanks for these graduates who, for who they are and what they have accomplished. We gather these remarkable people for one last time before we send them out to the world as ambassadors of justice where the rule of law is threatened within and without. They have experienced legal education in the midst of a pandemic that has challenged us as individuals, families, and institutions. They have concluded their formal education in the midst of war between nations and increasing violence in our cities. At the same time, that our very earth continues to suffer devastation and seeks the wisdom of restoration and healing in these new transformative leaders. We thank you for the resilience our graduates have shown, their perseverance and initiative in finding new ways to learn and build community. Let them know that they are not alone, and that our deep old community will always be here for them. Today we recall and give thanks for those absent due to distance, illness, or death. Many of them 
with their unselfish love enable our graduates to reach this moment in their lives. We thank deeply in our hearts for each one of them. Many of our graduates may our graduates never forget that they have become partners with Vincent and Luis de Marillac, who through their witness of compassion and collaboration taught us that we can address the challenges of society and nature by building networks of concern and systemic change. Please do not allow us to ever forget the many in our society who are systemically left behind, discriminated against, or denied daily their sacred dignity. Give our graduates courage to raise their voices for the vulnerable in whatever vocation they enter. We pray today in communion with families, faculty, all those who serve our students, and all those who contribute with their lives to peace, justice, and mercy in our society. Amen. Israel Del Mundo, a member of the College of Law, Class of 2022, and a candidate for the degree of Juris Doctorate, will perform the national anthem. Please welcome Israel to the podium. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave? O'er the land of the free and the home of the brave, the Be seated. Please welcome Jennifer Rosado Perea, Dean of the College of Law, who will introduce our commencement speaker. It is so wonderful to see you all here today. At commencement, DePaul traditionally invites individuals who have distinguished themselves in their careers and in the service of others to share their wisdom and experience with the graduates. It gives me great pleasure to introduce our commencement speaker, a graduate of this college in 1986, Natalie Paquin. Ms. Paquin is the President and Chief Executive Officer of Points of Light an international organization that calls people to serve as volunteers and change agents in their neighborhoods. 
Each year, Point of Light's five million volunteers, now spread all over the world, contribute 16 million hours of service. This offering of hope and love reminds us, in a remarkably Vincentian way, how every action matters and that no action is too small. Growing up in Miami, Ms. Paquin learned from her parents the importance of giving back to your community. She has carried that lesson throughout her professional life, a career filled with public service and community involvement. Shortly after graduating from the College of Law, Ms. Paquin became a civil rights attorney with the U.S. Department of Education. She later worked on behalf of public school systems in Chicago and in Philadelphia. For the past 15 years, Ms. Paquin has been an executive for nonprofits including the Kimmel Center in Philadelphia, Girl Scouts of Eastern Pennsylvania, and the Girl Scouts of the USA. In 2017, Points of Light recruited Ms. Paquin as its leader, impressed by her extensive experience and leadership in managing large and diffuse organizations. Recently, Forbes magazine named her to its 50 over 50 list of women who are changing their communities in, and the world in ways big and small. At the College of Law, we educate lawyers who will serve with purpose, integrity, and compassion. We could not be prouder of how Natalie Paquin represents these values of a DePaul education in the broader world. So please join me in welcoming back to DePaul for today's commencement address, Natalie Paquin. President Esteban, Dean Rosado Perea, Provost Ghanem, board, esteemed faculty and staff, thank you for inviting me to this very special day. Friends and family, welcome. And to the class of 2022, congratulations. Yes, this day is here. You've completed law school. But unlike many classes before, you navigated through a global pandemic, virtual classes, and extreme uncertainty. I'm sure your experience was not what you imagined, yet you rose to the occasion. Your hard work and commitment paid off, and you have earned your law degree, Master's of Jurisprudence, and Master of Law's degree. To each of you, your future awaits, and it is brimming with possibilities. To arrive at this moment for three years, you had to push through and draw on your inner strength that inner strength is your personal power. I am certain that there were friends and family who helped you along the way, and many of whom are here today. Thank you, family and friends. And graduates, at any point in your future, if you doubt yourself or your situation, recall how you pushed through law school during these unprecedented times. Recall how you focused and harnessed your energy as power. Frequently, power is seen as negative, and it may be negative when it's abused or unequally distributed. But power can be positive. The power of one to inspire. The power of people moving forward together. The power of collective impact for good. When you leave here, where, whatever path you take, you will become a part of the legal community. Our culture is shaped by the interpretation of our constitution and laws, and important arguments and positions are influenced by bright legal minds like yours. A particular aspect of my life was impacted by the law long before I earned my law degree. I was a direct beneficiary of Brown versus the Board of Education. As an early student of busing in Florida, each day my brother and I were picked up in Miami and driven to the newly integrated schools on South Beach. Though I didn't know it at the time, this legal decision contributed to a defining moment in my life. But for busing, 
I would not have had certain opportunities or experiences that changed the trajectory of my life. And Loving versus Virginia paved the way for me to legally marry my loving French-Canadian husband of nearly 30 years who is with me today. These landmark cases provided space for me to become the person I am today. Each year, the Supreme Court grapples with significant issues that challenge, stretch, and sometimes restrict our interpretation of the Constitution and laws. Inevitably, the outcome, no matter what argument is supported, impacts us all. I stand here today along my life's journey as a DePaul Law School alum, committed to using my power to love, uplift, and serve humanity in support of a more just and equitable world. Whatever your motivation for attending law school, your career will provide you with many opportunities to impact the world in positive ways. As a lawyer or legal professional, you will be asked for your opinion, insights, and advice. You will be in decision-making positions and provided many choices. It may be easy to say, that's the way things are. It's too difficult to take that on. The system is too complex, and it all may be true. But remember this, every system is strengthened or dismantled one decision at a time. Every action matters. System changes that seem improbable occur because of the power of people, the power of the collective, and typically the power of one person making a commitment to get off the sidelines, take action, and inviting others to join them. In the next couple of years, as you come across challenges, don't make excuses that you're just a first-year attorney or a junior associate or too busy. There are plenty of excuses that make it easy to not take action. Being here at DePaul, I want to share with you a quick law school story that punctuated a life lesson about no excuses. It was for me. I'm sure you've all had a time here uh, where you were at DePaul, where you knew things could have gone better. Well, I did too. My third year as a law student with the end in sight, I was enrolled in secured transactions. And for reasons that would make this story too long, let's say I missed a few classes. At the end of the semester, when I sat for the three hour exam, I spent the first 45 minutes literally staring at the three questions. I was so confused by the questions, it felt like I was reading the sheet music of Beethoven's Symphony No. 5. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> you know the song, right? You can imagine it. I knew it was not going well. I passed the class but it was the lowest grade I received in my entire academic career. And after the exam, I went to the professor trying to figure out a way to protect my GPA and retake the exam, and she simply asked, are you coming in here with an excuse? Hmm. I learned a valuable lesson from that experience. No excuses. Whether the stakes are high or low, when you make a choice and experience the consequences, own it and learn from it. Your choices are your power. So what's next? From here, you all will go on to engage in meaningful work. But remember to take time for meaningful experiences. Since my time in law school, my most meaningful experiences have been outside of our profession. Frequently, people ask me, how did you transition from practicing law to leading a global presidential legacy nonprofit? It was through my experiences as a volunteer. 
They provided me with additional opportunities to make connections and build skills in areas I was passionate about. Now, sources range a bit, but did you know that there are 1.6 million nonprofits in the US? Each year, they spend about $2 trillion, employ 10% of the US workforce, and receive over $400 billion in contributions? Did you know that they are primarily governed by volunteers who sit on their boards? Yes, volunteers influencing investment of trillions of dollars for social good each year. Now that's power, that's good power. You may be passionate about the law, but what else are you passionate about? Are you able to create a more just and equitable world for causes you care about? Whether it's access to health care, to the environment, education, human rights, your generation is excited and engaged. Points of Light conducted civic engagement research and found that Generation Z is the most civically engaged generation with 67% taking three or more civic actions in the last year. We may take different walks in life through our profession, but all of us have a civic life. We all have the power to listen and learn. As attorneys, we are trained to listen to spot issues and solve, but it's important to build the muscle to listen to understand. As attorneys, we are trained to use our voice to be persuasive in legal documents and courts and around business tables. But we can also use our voice around coffee tables with neighbors and in the car with family. Over a lifetime, you will be fairly and well compensated. Consider your ability to donate or use your purchasing power to support causes you care about. And wherever your journey takes you, please register and vote. Through your leadership, you will have the power to do good. Remember, every action matters and no kind act is too small. The degree you earn today places you in a position of power and influence. I often say power only respects power of an equal or greater force. The power of fire only respects the power of water if it's enough to put it out. The power of darkness will only be eclipsed by a greater power of light. DePaul Law graduates, class of 2022, our world needs more light. Our world needs your light. Our world is counting on you to recognize your light and the light in others, and together shine so bright that in our lifetime, darkness in whatever form is recorded as history. Thank you. Please join me in welcoming Simone Freeney, a member of this graduating class and candidate for the degree of Juris Doctorate to present the student address. Hi everyone, I'm gonna to try to get through this without crying even though I know my mother probably already is. My name is Simone Freeney and I was elected to be the Student Bar Association President of this past school year and with that comes the honor of speaking at graduation. I'd like to welcome you all to the first in-person graduation since May of 2019. When I started to think about writing a speech for graduation, I wanted to focus on shared experiences, but it was hard when for over a year, we were staring at each other from behind a screen and most of the time with our cameras turned off. When we all started law school, 
We could never have expected to be a part of the world's biggest collective watershed moment in recent decades. I, for one, had hopes of the return of the Roaring Twenties, but neglected to remember that it was on the tales of the Spanish flu that made the Roaring Twenties a time of celebration. We've reached our own personal time of celebration as we walk across the stage and we get our degrees, an accomplishment that not one person will ever be able to take away from you. This road has not been easy as we've battled a pandemic, social injustice, the loss of friends and family, all while trying to be students. But now, as we transition out of school and into practice, I invite you all to reflect and reminisce over your time in law school. I recently heard someone say that law school should be measured in dog years. And the more you think about it, the truer it is. You'll see as you begin to remember all the things you were able to accomplish during law school. Let's go all the way back to the beginning before law school even started. This incredibly diverse group of people decided to go to law school for different reasons and from different paths. For many, this was a second career, and for others, this was the very next step after undergrad. Regardless of where we all started, at some point, we all knew our ultimate goal was to become an attorney. We got accepted, and we made our decision to attend DePaul University College of Law. Personally, I had been in Chicago for a total of 12 hours of my life, but I was about to call this place home. We went to orientation together, and that was a real blur. I don't remember much of it, to be honest with you. What I can remember most is not understanding Chicago traffic and not realizing it would take me an hour to make the trip from Wrigleyville to the Loop. But I also remember Professor Klepich telling me that she'd rather birth another 10-pound baby than take the bar exam again. <laughs> I don't know about you, but that sure doesn't sound fun to me. And I remember just sitting there thinking, what did I get myself into? But we made it through. But that surely doesn't, wait, sorry, y'all. We made it through and we settled into a new normal with new friendships and even more connections to be made. Thinking about all the things we have participated in as a class, it's a wonder we could do it all in three years. Between all of us, there are countless hours spent on law review articles, journal articles, oral arguments, trial prep, and volunteering. And somehow we managed to be students on top of just the things we were doing with law school. The pandemic was hard, and it definitely was not what any of us had imagined when we started law school. But I didn't want to focus on the pandemic because we will always and forever be thought of as the Zoom-educated lawyers with only one full year of in-person learning. I'd rather talk about how I loved being able to see my fellow classmates make it through while finding their passions and helping others. Along the way, we've changed for the better. We are now new people. The most common phrase I heard going into law school was that, the law, that law school teaches you how to think like a lawyer. We've been trained to look at situations in a different way. I wouldn't even recognize myself this time three years ago. I've grown and I've changed so much over the past few years, and I've watched as every single one of you have grown into this new version of yourself. The version of yourself that is going to walk across the stage and get your degree placed in your hands and, is get, and gets to join the ranks of DePaul alumni. I hope you all take a moment to realize that you are not the same you that decided to go to this school. I don't know what you all imagine, but I would not have told you I'd be giving a speech at graduation. You are not the same you that walked into orientation. You are not the same you that walked out of class only to find that you'd spend the next year largely shut down. This is the beginning of a new chapter. We started law school one way, and ended law school another. And who knows, but in 10 years, we'll probably be completely different. But I, for one, am ecstatic to be a part of this watershed moment with all of you today. Every single graduate here has accomplished something amazing, regardless of the pressures holding us back. Not only did you succeed, but you triumphed, and I am proud of every single one of you. Our journey doesn't stop here, as some of us will become professors, and some of us top 40 attorneys, some of us even politicians. But whatever your journey after law school, everyone here will make an impact. I am proud to be a part of this cohort of courageous, talented, and inspiring graduating class. Beyond that, I am proud to have represented you, even though this class had no problem representing themselves. And I have no doubt that everyone here will make great attorneys. Before I go, I'd like to thank my friends and family, both here and watching at home. I couldn't have done it without your support and encouragement. And I want to apologize ahead of time to all of the loved ones sitting here today 
that will be willfully ignored over the next few months. I want to thank the professors for training us to think like lawyers and providing us with countless opportunities and support as we navigated this pandemic together. I'd like to thank everyone in Balsa and SBA for always having my back when I needed it. And finally, I'd like to thank and congratulate my classmates for going through this amazing journey with me. Now, let's go past that bar. Here, here. Dean Rosado Perea will present the Faculty, Staff, and Student Achievement Awards. It is now my great pleasure to introduce our Faculty and Staff Graduation Awards, one of our traditions of graduation. We have many deserving faculty and staff who work very hard every day to help all of our students succeed, especially these last two plus years. And there are a few standout performances that I want to recognize today. The Faculty Teaching Award is given to Jody Marcucci. Professor Marcucci is a dedicated LARC teacher who brings experience and compassion to her role. She is innovative and enthusiastic about trying new things to help her students learn. This past year in particular, in the midst of the pandemic, she creatively transformed LARC 3 to ensure that students continue to build their writing and analytical skills the best they could during the pandemic. She brought the course online and trained all the adjunct professors to make sure the quality of the course stayed high. Congratulations, Professor Marcucci. The Faculty Scholarship Award is given to Professor Mark Moeller. You all know Professor Moeller as a knowledgeable, insightful teacher of civil procedure and legal profession. He is that and much more. This past year, he has been working very hard on a number of articles on his own and with prestigious co-authors to provide a nuanced, thoughtful perspective on issues such, such as corporate citizenship in diversity jurisdiction, yes, that's very interesting, and litigant autonomy. Among the faculty, he is also a constant presence for ensuring that all perspectives are heard and considered, encouraging dialogue with openness and civility. Congratulations, Professor Mahler. The Faculty Achievement Award is given to Mark Weber. Professor Weber is an all-around athlete of a professor, excelling in teaching, scholarship, and service to the community. He is appreciated by his students for his steadiness and his wealth of knowledge. What you may not know is he also prolifically writes articles and books that shine the light on disability law and civil rights law, work that is cited by other scholars, lawyers, and courts and he is equally generous in giving his time to the community, teaching and training others to make the law more just and fair. Congratulations, Professor Weber. The Faculty Service Award is given this year to Dean Allison Tirez. Dean Tirez is not only an excellent teacher and scholar, but she serves our community selflessly every day. From drafting course schedules to launching new programs, she approaches each project with thoughtfulness and persistence, always finding where our community has common ground to move forward. She is an effective leader, whether she leads from the front or from the back. In particular this year, through her talent for writing with precision and beauty, the mission statement and the DEI curriculum proposals became a reality for all of us. Congratulations, Dean Tiras. <laughs> Two staff members will also receive service awards today. The first award goes to Katie Liss, 
Katie has had an eventful year. As many of you know, she's taken on double duty as the Assistant Dean of Law Career Services, as well as continuing in her role as Executive Director of the Schiller, Ducanto, and Fleck Family Law Center. In her new role, she has hit the ground running and has brought the same vision, diligence, positivity, and thoughtfulness to LCS that she has given to all her work at the law school. We especially cherish her collaborative approach to problem solving. Congratulations, Katie. And while she's walking up here, Katie is also your point person for getting a job next year. So make sure you reach out to her as well. The second Staff Service Award goes to James Redmond. You may not know James, but as an alumnus, you certainly will. As the law school's Associate Director of Alumni Relations, he is an event planner, a roadie, a speech writer, and a data specialist all in one. He has been integral to organizing and engaging our Dean's Advisory Council, Alumni Engagement Board, Diversity Council, and Alumni Judges Committee. And he plans beautifully executed marquee events, such as the annual law reception, alumni reception, which I hope to see you at this fall, and the super lawyers reception, which you may be attending in a few more years. The success of these initiatives is due to his, due to his great ideas, and perfect follow through. Congratulations, James. It is now my honor and privilege to present the student graduation awards, which have not yet been announced. All of our students here are North Stars, our purpose and our passion for being here at DePaul. On the toughest and most exhausting days during this pandemic, you all gave the faculty and staff a purpose, a reason to wake up in the morning, a reason to hope and to try our best every day. As many of your family and friends have seen as you walked in, that all graduates on Law Review, Appellate Moot Court Society, or Trial Team are eligible for honor cords, as well as students who have held any executive or editorial board position of a student organization or other law journal. So if, it's a, if you have a, a, a light blue stole on, you're a member of the SBA, the Student Bar Association, the Law Review has a gold cord, Law journals, silver cords, moot court and trial team, purple cords, and all student organization leaders are wearing red cords. So you'll see them as they process out at the end of the ceremony. And some of our students are the brightest stars in the sky who already shine as leaders in our community and will shine in every community that they enter in the future. There are five deserving winners this year based on nominations from faculty or staff. They are creative, passionate, generous, and inclusive leaders, and we recognize them today. As I call your name, please stand. First, Sherrod Craig. Sherrod served as president of the Appellate Moot Court Society, an executive member, board member of BALSA and Phi Alpha Delta, a member of the Student DEI Committee, a staff researcher for the Business and Commercial Law Journal. He also served as evening student SBA senator every year during his time at DePaul. The second award goes to Morgan Drake. Morgan served as the president of SAIL, which is the Society for Asylum and Immigration Law, as a student leader in the inaugural Undocumented and Documented Student Working Group, and was active in the Public Interest Law Association, which we call PILA. She completed over 300 hours of pro bono service and was the recipient of the Cali Award for the highest grade in two courses. The next awardee is Dominique Mejia. Dominique served as Vice President of SAIL, the Society of Asylum and Immigration Law. She also served as a volunteer interpreter for both DePaul Legal Clinics and the National Immigration Justice Center. She acted as a student ambassador for DePaul, helping to recruit public interest-minded students to the College of Law, the next generation. Megan Osajinski is our next awardee. 
Megan served as co-chair of, of the DePaul National Lawyers Guild, as well as the International Human Rights Institute. She served as a student member, mentor through PILA, the Public Interest Law Association, and she received two Cali Awards for academic achievement. Congratulations. The fifth awardee is Sophia Wilson. <laughs> Sophia served as a student men mentor for both PILA and the First Generation Student Organization. She also served on the Business and Commercial Law Journal. She received the Benjamin Hook Service Award for completing 375 hours of pro bono work, points of light, we'll want to talk to you uh, in the future, as well as a Cali Award for academic achievement. Please congratulate all of the Student Service Awards and academic achievement winners. They're fantastic. The last recognition that I would like to make this afternoon is to Professor Emily Cobble. As you may know, Professor Cobble will be leaving DePaul to join the University of Wisconsin Law Faculty. Professor Cobble is a wonderful teacher and scholar and is generous in her service to the law school, especially our students, and you know why. She lives her values and is a role model for all of us. We will miss her greatly and wish her the best. So please give Professor Cobble one last final round of applause. <laughs> Honored guests, it is now my distinct pleasure to introduce Dr. Gabriel Esteban, president of DePaul University. Thank you, Dean. Members of the Vincentian community and the clergy, trustees, life trustees, faculty, administration, staff, and honored guests, I'm humbled and blessed to stand before you today. Thank you for joining us to celebrate the DePaul University College of Law Class of 2022. Your company means everything to us. Natalie Packin, I'm grateful to you for serving as our commencement speaker. You exemplified the ideals of DePaul University, and we are proud to call you one of our own. You have provided the class of 2022 with one last lesson before they depart DePaul, and we thank you for sharing your experience and wisdom. I also would like to recognize any members of the military and veterans who are here today. Thank you for the risk you have taken and sacrifices made to protect the safety and freedom of others. Finally, I'd like to recognize and thank my wife, Jo. As you know, this is my last year as DePaul's president. It has been a true honor to lead this remarkable university over the last five years. And Joe has been by my side every step along the way. Just as you, our graduates, are about to start a new chapter in your lives, Joe and I will do the same. And I'm very grateful to have her as my partner and friend. DePaul College of Law, Class of 2022. I know these last few years have not been easy. Think back to when you started at DePaul. Does the world look different to you now? You may have a new perspective on life. You're stronger. You're more flexible and patient. I'm inspired by the determination and care that you have demonstrated throughout your time at DePaul. I'm also extremely grateful to all the faculty and staff who continue to support our College of Law students. You help our students complete their education at DePaul. Today is an achievement for you as well. 
At DePaul, we strive to be an inclusive and diverse community of learners who work for change. We hope to transform society. When we see populations being harmed by violent conflict, our Catholic and sentient mission calls us to ask, what must be done? We strive to integrate nonviolence, dialogue, and peace building into the educational experience our students receive, all with the hope they will carry these Vincentian values forward. As a Catholic university, we cannot ignore the international conflicts affecting the stability of our world. I call on our community to unify in prayer for all of those who are victims of the atrocious, irrational, and tragic war in Ukraine, and in any corner of the world in which peace is under fire. Please join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. The world has its fair share of uncertainties right now, but together we can work for societal change and peace. We always have hope. That's why the world needs DePaul graduates. The world especially needs DePaul College of Law graduates because you know what it takes to succeed. You know how to roll up your sleeves and do whatever it takes to make things right. You understand the importance of giving back at DePaul, our Catholic Vincentian mission to serve the public good is at the heart of everything we do. We have taught you to fight for social justice, help those most in need, listen, and always be kind. Please keep our Vincentian values close to your heart. Be mindful of the responsibility that comes with a DePaul diploma, the diploma that bears the name of St. Vincent de Paul. DePaul University College of Law, class of 2022, you are ready to serve an ever-changing world. Transformed by your DePaul education, grounded in mission, make us proud. The candidates for the various degrees will now come forward. Dean Rosado Perea will present the graduating class. This is the moment you've been waiting for. <laughs> President Esteban, on behalf of the faculty of the College of Law, I respectfully present the candidates and recommend that the announced degrees be conferred upon them. By the authority vested in me, by the Board of Trustees and the State of Illinois, I confer upon you each of the degree for which you have been recommended with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereunto. Benjamin Alba, Professor and Director of Academic Success, will announce the names of the candidates for the degrees of Master of Jurisprudence in Business Law and Taxation, Master of Jurisprudence in Criminal Law, Master of Jurisprudence in Health Law, Master of Jurisprudence in Public Interest Law, Master of Laws in Intellectual Property, Master of Laws in Taxation, Master of Laws in U.S. Legal Studies, Juris Doctor, Master of Laws in International Law, Juris Doctor, Master of Laws in Taxation, and Juris Doctor. Thank you, Dean Jen. The College of Law graduates will be hooded by Allison Tires, Allison Ortlieb, Max Helveston, and Julie Lawton. Some of our graduates will be hooded by the Legacy Alumni. Legacy Alumni are graduates of the College of Law who are members of the graduates' immediate families. The bestowal of the hood on the graduate symbolizes the awarding of their degree.
The following candidates have successfully completed the requirements and have been awarded the degree of Master of Jurisprudence in Business Law and Taxation. Marta Frankiv. The following candidates have successfully completed the requirements and are awarded the degree of Master of Jurisprudence in Criminal Law. George Kinsey. Thomas Bresnahan. Shantae Morgan. Ernesto Torres. Johnny Edward Tate, Jr. Antonio Godinez. Jennifer Fowler. Renata Worrell. Nicholas Boyle. Mariposa Brandt. Olivia Karras. Lisa Guzman. Roberta Chapa. Victor Perez. Emmanuel Mohammed. Wilma Santana. Trisha Solis. Anthony Walton. Alonzo Bernal. Brendan Lyons. Kinga Stanek. Max Torres. Alfredo Resendez. Antonio Reboledo. Young Sun. Victor Sandoval. Eric Cespedes. The following candidates have successfully completed the requirements and are awarded the degree of Master of Jurisprudence in Health Law. Madeline Panos. The following candidates have successfully completed the requirements and are awarded the degree of Master of Jurisprudence in Public Interest Law. Jasmine Sade. Charisse Parsegian. Betty Whitfield. Morgan Minifield. The following candidates have successfully completed the requirements and are awarded the degree of Master of Laws in U.S. Legal Studies. Matilda Becco. Ronina Kochi. Uzer Ahmad Gill. The following candidates have successfully completed the requirements and are awarded the degree of Juris Doctor, Master of Laws in International Law. Abdul Wase Shahid. The following candidates, the following candidates have successfully completed the requirements and have been awarded the degree of Juris Doctor. Sage Shavers. Brenna Danaher. Michelle Boveri. Carolina Perez Feuerstein. P. 
Peter Krusevich. Brooke Sieplick. Megan Jackson. Olivia Cappers. Ethan Perboner. John Hermes. Jonah Halpern. Ethan Glendenny. Daniel Coleman. Simone Freeney. Israel Del Mundo. <laughs> Michael Zuckerman. Isaac Gettleman. Sherrod Craig. Adam Kenny. John Lacerdo. Ilyin Khan. Lindsay Garcia Peshoff. Caleb Rimmer. Sam Weiner. Tristan Minx. <laughs> Dominique Mejia. <laughs> Michaela Stovland. <laughs> Brittany Hunt Hutner. <laughs> Talia Grossman. Megan Moran. <laughs> Hoyon Yu. <laughs> Kenneth Yap. <laughs> Connie Rosas. <laughs> Caroline McAuliffe. <laughs> Casey Hennessy. Aaron Mitchell Reyes Mudlong. Jessica Alvarez. Joshua Martin. Nicholas Pujesic. Christopher McCarthy. Joseph Chester Stralka Style. Luke Balistrero. Kyle Howe. William Burgess. Joseph Garcia. Samuel Archie. Chris Tatio. Sophia Wilson. Angelina Campen. <laughs> and company. Andrea Howell. Whitney Roth. Ty Stradling. Michelle Redondo. Georgie Beerworth. Sarah Riddick. Emily Rui. Sophia Idrizi. Amber Anser Rodriguez. 
Bradley Mamroth. Evelina Skutnik. Kyleen Kreko. Tommy Chikondi. Louis Hart. Erica Nieto. Nicholas Crawford. Matty Glynn. Margarita Martinez. Lisa Ibarra. Angelina Bendick. Catherine Kettering. Robert Hanrahan. Rizwan Ali. <laughs> Valerie Dozier. <laughs> Jonathan Rosenthal. Uh -huh. Matthew Kurnat. <laughs> Milica Kosonovich. Uh -huh. Miguel Gomez. Greta Rodriguez Franco. <laughs> Timothy Nazanin. <laughs> William Clark. <laughs> Alexander Hardaway. <laughs> Paris Knight. Madeline Price. Benjamin Virgo. Haley Arneri. Nicole Muzikotis. Samuel Rossi. Reagan Ehlers. Cameron Deloach. Danielle Pierce. Yvette Ocasio. Mega Rana. Sean Sullivan. Max Hillsman. Sean McQuillan. Andrew Burnham. Michael O'Malley. Rebecca Hens. Maria Dodona. Soraya Dale. And a legacy hooding, Eric Baronis. Eric Baronis to be hooded by his father, the Honorable Luis A. Baronis, Associate Judge of the Illinois 19th Judicial Circuit Court and graduate of the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences in 1980 and the College of Law in 1983. James Evans Roberts, Jr. Brent Midkiff. Zachary Stillman. James Nasiri. Sean O'Donnell. Nicholas Sherino. 
Jonathan Piazza. Jocelyn Jordan Kersner. Kelly Zielinski. Matush Zhuja. Anthony Evianis. Rianne Brun. Madison Amboyan. Victoria Pistolarides. Alexandra, Alexandra Stangi. Catherine Phillips. Maggie Sloan. Farzana Amen. Paul Perry. <laughs> Tiffany Chisholm Okoye. Oscar Quidos. Jasmine Moore. Mariah Bird. Lakia Scales. Arteka Ross Jr. Jenea Lovelace. Adriana Hernandez. Nabia Badges. Sydney Warda. Laura Chapman. Sydney Whipperford. Megan Ozaginski. Morgan Elizabeth Drake. Tianlin Wong. Ashley Virgil. Gina George. Joshua Klein. Silpa Belusu. Bridget Roddy. Jamie Verbancic. Courtney Barthelemy. Miranda Curtis. Morgan Breitbach. Matthew Capen. Eduardo Cervantes. Henry Stillwell. <laughs> Timothy Cronin. <laughs> Jeffrey Jalolich. <laughs> Justice Mohammed. Kevin Ron Marana. Catherine Marie Hayes. Christopher Babb. Kelsey Leeming. Granger Gridley. Tramel Moore. David Evans. William Cunningham. Ryan Carmody. 
Andrew Joseph Kyle. Delaney O'Neill. Reagan Airy. Isaac Hopper. Amy Patel. Alexis Beeman. Jacqueline Ocampo. Hannah Kelly. Victoria Mazur. Jessica Carol Olson. Emily Salas. Abigail Teaster. Sarah Mercatoris. And our final graduates of the class of 2022, Ashley Mastro. Round of applause. Honored guests, it is now my distinct pleasure to introduce Salma Ganim, Provost. Congratulations, class of 2022. Commencement is one of the most meaningful ceremonies of a student's academic career. And a DePaul commencement is anything but ordinary. As a Catholic Vincentian University, we share a commitment to uphold the dignity of every single person. And we, and we call it Vincentian personalism. In fact, you just witnessed Vincentian personalism in action on this very stage as we took the time to recognize every graduating student. But the presence of the family members, friends, faculty and staff here today made that moment even more special for our students. And now it's their turn to thank you. So may I ask all of our graduates to please stand. Let's recognize all those who helped you get here today. Would the parents of the graduates please stand? We're not done, we're not done, hold on. Will the grandparents please stand? Will the partners, children, and siblings please stand? Will, will the aunts, uncles, cousins, friends, neighbors, and whoever helped you cross that stage, can you please stand? <laughs> Honored guests, you may sit down, but students, I, you're not guests, Just keep standing. Don't sit down yet. There are a few more people here today who helped you get to this moment in your academic career. Would our faculty and staff please stand? <laughs> faculty and staff, 
You have shared your expertise and knowledge with our students. You have supported them with care and empathy throughout many challenges. Class of 2022, please take a look at your faculty and staff. Remember the many lessons gained both in and out of the classroom. And now it's your responsibility to carry their teachings forward. Let's give our faculty and staff a big round of applause. Okay, you may sit down now. College of Law class of 2022, you have worked hard and you are well equipped to excel on your chosen path. As you begin your adventure, please stay connected to the Paul. Share your milestones with us. We would love to hear about them and we know there will be many. We can't wait to see you, what you do next. But the last step in, our, in your journey at DePaul is to be inducted into the alumni community. Simone Frini, a member of this distinguished class, will initiate this induction, and Carla Micoletti, member of the Board of Trustees and distinguished alum of the College of Law, will accept the inductees for membership. Please join me in welcoming Simone and Carla to the podium. Will my fellow classmates please rise? I know, you just sat down. <laughs> Inscribed upon this scroll are the names of the members of the DePaul University's 123rd graduating class of the College of Law, the class of 2022. On behalf of my classmates, I request that our names be added to the list of alumni of DePaul University. As proud new alumni, we affirm our alma mater values of service and advocacy, and we pledge to uphold these values both in our communities and in our lifelong relationships with our university. Thank you. We proudly accept these graduates into DePaul University's Alumni Association. Members of the 123rd graduating class, we welcome you to the next step in your lifelong connection to DePaul as students yesterday, graduates today, and alumni forever. You are now part of an even larger DePaul community of over 200,000 alumni living in all 50 states and around the world. The continued vitality of DePaul University depends upon each of us as alumni and our pledge of allegiance, devotion, and service to the university. I now ask that all the DePaul alumni in the audience join the graduates and stand up any other DePaul alumni, and <laughs> thank you. And we invite you, the class of 2022, to accept membership into this august body of alumni by moving your tassel from the right to the left. A, a symbolic gesture of your transformation from a student of DePaul University to a lifelong learner and citizen of the world. I am so honored and proud to join tens of thousands of alumni, all of whom are applauding you today, and they come before you making this pledge. Congratulations, class of 2022, on receiving your degree. As you graduate today, you may be feeling a little bittersweet about your law school experience. Sweet, perhaps, because you finally finished law school and you enthusiastically look forward to beginning your professional life as a lawyer. 
or other legal professional. But you might feel a little bitter, perhaps, as well, as you had to attend law school during a pandemic and couldn't have a normal law school experience, and it was an experience with many unexpected challenges out of your control. The experience that you embrace walking out the doors today will depend on your perspective. As Henry David Thoreau has said, it's not what you look at that matters, it's what you see. So regardless of whether you graduated during a pandemic or not, I hope that you will see that you are now a DePaul lawyer. You are a member of a network and community of over 16,000 lawyers. You are a lawyer with experience, with grit, with compassion, and with purpose. You are that purpose-driven lawyer who will always ask the Vincentian questions of what must be done, what must I do, what must you do, and what must we do. And you will always do it very well, as many, many DePaul lawyers have done before you. So congratulations on your wonderful achievement. We are so very proud of you. Our congratulations to you all. We thank you for attending the class of 2022 commencement of DePaul University's College of Law. Please remain seated until the graduates have recessed. Congratulations. Congratulations.